Let's rank drugstore hair brands. If you're new to my channel and if you're not, welcome back. I'm Mike. I'm who? I'm a hairdresser, a L'Oreal color specialist, a makeup fan, and a skincare lover. In today's film, I will be rating drugstore hair brands. So if you want to find out what I think about certain drugstore hair brands, whether they're good or they're a hateful dirt, then you better keep on watching. What is the story everyone? In today's film we are ranking brands and in front of me I have 12 very known drugstore brands in Ireland. Um, let me know if you don't have them in your country but those are drugstore brands that you can find in Boots or your local pharmacy over here in Ireland. And now you guys, I did do a few of them. I did rank hair styling products before. I did rank professional hair care but I said you know what let's do one just for drugstore so you guys we have three different categories the first category is sure why not and this is category because sure why not i might as well just use it in my hair so this is as good as it gets on the ranking sure why not i'll use it and off we go the second category is not a muck yet not a shampoo and if you know what i did a work play on then let me know in the comment section down below so those are really your middle class products that do you know what they're not a hay dart, they're not a muck but they're not like up there that i'm gonna wash my hair with and then we obviously have the very famous hape of dirt and dirt with a U and not I because this is MDC. And who'd ever think that MDC would be dipping in the waters of drugstore. Right you guys, enough about it and let's get right into it. The first drugstore brand I will be talking about is LV. I did talk about LV a few times on my channel. I compared it to professional hair care range. And overall, like, Elviv, if I was going to a drugstore, right, and Elviv would be probably the only shampoo. Like, it's a shampoo I know and a hair care range I know. Would I have it in my shower? Probably I wouldn't. And not probably, I probably wouldn't because it's still not that great. But as a drugstore shampoo, Elviv is gonna go to, sure, why not? Because sure, why not? Let's just use it in my hair. Right, you guys, the next range we have is Mau Moisture. The images are so, are so tiny, I can barely see myself. It is Mau Moisture and Mau Moisture is quite an amazing drugstore range. Comparing to LV, I think Mau Moisture knows what they're doing when it comes to drugstore. I love anything from the packaging to the concept to the formula and they have an amazing range for textured, curly and coily hair and I think as a drugstore range, Mau Moisture, because like that some of the products are silicone free, some of them are sulfate free, they just know a lot more about hair care game than some of the other drugstore shampoos. If I was thinking about Mau Moisture, I'd definitely think of it as more of a professional hair care range than a drugstore. But overall, I think Mau Moisture is amazing and it will go into sure why not. Right you guys, the next range we have, and it, has, and it is actually very interesting, it's Bumble and Bumble, right? And I know in some countries Bumble and Bumble is classified as professional, but here over in Ireland it's a drugstore brand. And I think Bumble and Bumble is actually, sure why not, it's actually a very, very good range of products and they have amazing products for curly hair, which I definitely think that Bumble and Bumble was one of the first drugstore brands that really knew how to tackle curly hair and how to get the right products for curly hair and how to look after curly hair. And I know loads of my curly hair clients went for Bumble and Bumble because there was nothing else on the market. But as we all know, people are learning and there's a lot more on the market now. So for that, Bumble and Bumble is in sure, why not? Right, you guys, the next hair care range is OGX. I, I call it OGX. And do you know what, you guys? It's probably not the best hair care brand in the drugstore. It is probably more of a hay dirt. But OGX was probably one of the first hair care ranges that you could get in a drugstore that was sulfate free and I remember when I was doing my training which is a long time ago when I was training to be a hairdresser we were actually doing 12 week blow dry keratin treatments all that kind of stuff we did call it the Brazilian blow dry 
I know some 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 people call it the 12 week blowout. Some people call it the keratin treatment. And like that, they do advise to use the sulfate free shampoo. And there was not many on the market back then. And I know OGX was one of the first ones to actually come out with a drugstore sulfate free shampoo. So for that, OGX is gonna go to not a muck yet not a shampoo. Right, you guys. The next part that we have is Dove. Right, so let's talk about Dove and Dove should just stick to soap, right? I mean, Dove is an amazing soap. They have lovely like body stuff and shower gels and everything and they should stay away from hair. I think it's one of, Dove is just one of those brands that just decided, hey, we make nice smelly stuff. Let's just make stuff for hair. And to me, Dove is an absolute hape of dirt when it comes to drugstore products. Right you guys, so this is actually very interesting. When it comes to drugstores, so far we have a lot more on the top than we have on the bottom. But I feel like it's not gonna be for long because the next hair care brand we're gonna be talking about is Ozzy. And when it comes to Ozzy, Ozzy just smells like cheap bubblegum and it's full of silicone, it builds up on the hair, it's just not good. I know the three minute miracle treatment was a big hype and I definitely think it's overrated and to me Ozzy is definitely a hype of dirt when it comes to products. Stay away from it. It is probably one of the worst hair care brands you could use for your hair because like that it builds up on the hair and it can cause reaction with color. All right you guys. The next product we have is definite hyper dirt and that is Tresemme. And a long story with Tresemme, Tresemme claims to be professional, it's not, it's horrible. They did have claims and lawsuits for hair loss with their new keratin shampoo. And overall, do you know what, I used to use Tresemme when I was a kid because I thought there was nothing better in the world and I mean, three euro for half a liter bottle of shampoo as is why not, let's go for it. But overall Tresemme is just, it doesn't do anything, it builds up on the hair, it smells horrible, it lingers on your hair, no. So, Tresemme is a hapel dirt. Right, you guys, the next drugstore hair care range, and that's, that range I am very bit like, uh, is Garnier. Garnier Fructis is disgusting. I'm just gonna put it out there. Garnier Fructis, Fructis is disgusting. It, no, Garnier Fructis, if, am I even saying that correctly? Fructis? Fructis? Is, do you know what? Anything from the smell to the actual product. However, the Garnier Natural Blend, I think I, I did review that on my channel. It was the, was it the coconut or the banana shampoo? Remember they made like a 99% nat natural hair care range within Garnier. That was actually all right. But when it comes to Garnier Fructis, it's actually a hape of dirt. However, because of Garnier Natural Blend, and I did actually like the banana, the coconut, and all those shampoos that they came out with, Garnier is gonna go to not a muck yet not a shampoo, but overall, Garnier is just, like it's, like, right, Natural Blend is not a muck, and it's not a shampoo, however, the fructis part is a apodor. Does that make sense? Right, you guys, the next one is, I like to call it like it's a copycat or a sister of Garnier or Garnier is a sister and a copycat of that brand and that's Herbal Essence. And Herbal Essence has been around for ages and do you know what? It claimed to be natural and everything. There's nothing natural about it. It's nothing but a hypodort. It's, it's just not good for the hair. I definitely know that not Herbal Essence is trying to like get back and like step up their game but they're just not there so for that I'm really sorry, but Herbal Essence is a hate of dirt. Now you guys, I'm giving out more in this film than actually saying anything good, but let's get into it. The next range we're gonna be talking about is Head and Shoulders. And you guys, if you know, if you've watched me, Head and Shoulders does nothing but the worst for your scalp. It, do you know what, it irritates the scalp, it's, you know, like, it does remove dry, flaky scalp slash dandruff from your scalp, but overall, it's nothing but a heap of dirt. Like, 
I actually, out of all, do you know what? I'd rather wash my hair with Dove and Aussie than Head and Shoulders. I just wouldn't. It's the smell of it, the texture, and your hair and your scalp are, it's just in bits afterwards. And that's just my personal opinion about it. Right, you guys, the next hair care range we're going to be talking about is Pan 10. And someone actually called me out in the comment section saying that it's not Pan 10, that it's Pan Teen. Tomato, tomato, I call it Pan 10. In Ireland, we call it Pan 10. I don't know, it could depend on an accent, it could be Pan Teen. I've actually never heard anyone calling it Pan Teen, but please let me know how you pronounce it, but I call it Pan 10 Pro V. Now, you guys, when it comes to Pan 10 or Pan Teen, I've actually reviewed uh, Pan 10 Hair Biology on my channel, and I was actually very impressed. And I was very, very impressed because it was, right, they removed everything, they removed silicone sulfates in it, and as a product itself, it was actually very good. And I was quite shocked about it, because I was like, right, Pan 10 is going in the right direction, but is that enough for Pan 10 to not be a hate of dirt? Just on that one range? Because the rest of Pan 10 Pro V is a muck. But I don't think the hair biology actually made enough progress for Pantene. I think if Pantene went that direction, changed their package and changed their scent, reformulate and try to be that new brand, I think that that would be a good way forward for Pantene. That's such an iconic big drugstore hair care brand. But overall, I think Pantene is a hapo dart. Right, you guys. Last but definitely not least is Shea Moisture. And when it comes to Shea Moisture, I think Shea Moisture is very underrated. It's a very, very good brand. It's for a drugstore, it has a very wide range of products and it definitely looks after curly, coily and texture there, which is a big plus. And I mean, some of their leave-in in creams for coils and curls are quite amazing. And I must say, I did talk about Shea Moisture in my best curly film before. And overall, for a drugstore brand, I think Shea Moisture is sure, why not? Right, you guys, so let's talk about everything. Sure, why not? We do have Elviv, Mau Moisture, Bumble and Bumble, and Shea Moisture. How do we feel about it? Let me know in the comment section below. Not a muck yet, not a shampoo. We do have OGX and we do have Garnier. However, I do think Garnier is a hapador, but that natural blend collection did kind of swing me from hapador to not a muck. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And when it comes to hapador, we have Dove, we have Aussie, we have Tresemme, Head and Shoulders, Herbal Essence, and Pantene slash Pantene Pro V. And you guys, yeah, do let me know what you think. Would you change anything about it? Would you add anything about it? Let me know what drugstore brands are popular in your country, because I know from country to country, drugstore hair product brands vary. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching today's film. I hope you found this film interesting, helpful, and useful. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also, check out my other social media. And of course, you guys, please, please, please do take care. Bye.